Hi, Anthony James here. Last month we was in Wiltshire. Uh, we went down to uh, have a look at the crop circles. Uh, when we got down there, there wasn't any. There was uh, quite late starting this year. Uh, in the meantime, we also met up with an old friend of mine, Matthew Williams. And uh, just to get things rolling, I asked uh, if he would do an interview about his involvement with crop circles. Uh, if you know anything about crop circles, uh, they are mysterious things to be around. Um, while being made, uh, things happen, strange things happen. And um, during this video you're about to watch, we had some strange stuff. It was filmed at the Barge Inn in Pusa in Wiltshire and uh, we had three cameras rolling uh, we also had a, a, a audio recorder a professional audio recorder device running as well all three cameras packed up at one time or another the audio recorder stopped working uh, the audio recorder itself a DR05 Tascam DR05 um, it has still got hours and hours and hours of uh, battery life and audio space on the memory card to stop working. Uh, the camcorder I'm filming on now, that kept turning on and off, on and off, on and off, all the time before we even got rolling. Um, I also had a GoPro uh, filming as well and after about 20 minutes that's that just froze the audio recorded but the picture the entire framing of the picture the entire lot just froze uh, i ended up having to film on my uh, digital camera uh, photographic camera it's got video on it like they all have these days and i had to end up filming on that uh, so with all the chopped up pieces of footage <laughs> I managed to make this video and it was like some of the secrets the, whoever the forces that be the powers that be um, didn't want this information or the video making so anyway yeah here's the interview with Matthew Williams and myself my wife Carol was in the room also monitoring the cameras and uh, yeah this is the video uh, quite um, revealing Enjoy. Well, today I'm here with uh, Matthew Williams and we're going to be talking about crop circles. This is the guy who is, uh, well, I'd say he was famous in Wiltshire for his escapades of going around military sites, caving, and uh, I've known him since the mid 1990s and uh, he spoke at uh, UFO conferences uh, I've organised. And tonight, Matt, I'd like to ask you a few questions about crop circles. Okay, I, I, I can probably answer most of your questions, but let's give it a go. <laughs> right. um, you're the only guy that's been convicted of making a crop circle damage. He, sadly, yes. Through trying to be a researcher and trying to get people to know the truth, yeah. I was trying to work with um, scientists and crop circle people and uh, you know it led on to me actually telling them wh what I would be doing and where I would be doing it so that they could keep quiet about it and then let people kind of make their you know assessments of what that circle was and how authentic it was and then we would bring that information out later later on in time unfortunately though uh, they had other plans they they took the information and then they took it to the police and uh, police came around and said did you make that crop circle and I thought well I could say no and if I said that there wouldn't really be any proof of me having made it yeah. but um, considering where I was with trying to help the researchers and trying to make this known I thought well actually I'll, I'll admit to it and I'll say yes I did actually make that crop circle and uh, yeah I got convicted the magistrates actually found it quite funny did they? As well, they were they were laughing. They thought it was quite humorous, and <laughs> and um, the farmer was trying to get four hundred pounds worth of damage for for the crop, and I brought evidence into court, which uh, because I kind of knew this may happen, 
yeah. that they that, that they would try and lay lay it on like oh, thousands of pounds worth of damage. They always say this sort of stuff. Um, so I brought evidence in to say that uh, based on the size and the estimation, it would probably be about twenty pounds worth of crop. Really. So the the magistrate said um, to the farmer and his defence uh, lawyers. Uh, can you prove why it's £400 worth of damage? And they went, no. And he said, well, I'll award you nothing then. Wow. <laughs> so that was interesting. Um, you know, this, this is what happens when you exaggerate in court. It doesn't go well for you. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Now, today is the 12th of June, 2024. And we have not had any crop circles this year. <laughs> <laughs> Up until yesterday, because of my lack of involvement in the crop circle uh, phenomena for quite some time, um, I have not even looked until you said yesterday there were no crop circles. I haven't even looked. And last year, towards the end of the season, I looked and saw that there weren't many, and I was like, wow, that's gone downhill. Yeah. And then this year, you really surprised me by saying, to this point, there is nothing out there. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm very reluctant to go online on my channels uh, on YouTube and say this because if I say it somebody's going to go out and make a crop, crop circle just to show that I'm wrong yeah. so yeah <laughs> I'm not going to jinx it and we'll just see how it progresses yeah now yeah. last last year uh, I asked you a question mm -hmm. uh, Matt how many percentage of crop circles are man-made and your reply was Give me. Uh, do you want to? Do you do you want um, the given answer, or do you want the actual answer? And I says, I want the actual answer. And you replied was, hundred percent. So all crop circles are man-made. And um, if there are any which are not man-made, it would probably be the simple swirls right that that may have started some of this off over the years you know with interest but um, <clears throat> anything that seems to have a straight lines patterns designs symbols that's generally a good indication that you're dealing with an intelligence and what's the most likely intelligence that's doing it we're human well humans are certainly doing it um, where where we get our inspiration from is another thing. But that's that's, that's, that's a bigger part of the story. Yes, yeah, yeah. so that's what I want to come on to. Yeah, because there's uh, there is a lot more to this than just going out faking mm -hmm. crop circles. Well, we don't fake crop circles. See, that's another thing. See, people uh -huh. say, ah, you're hoaxers. You're faking crop circles. It's like if we stop, there's no crop circles. So how are we faking it? Because we are the crop circle makers. So we're not actually faking something because we'd be faking ourselves. So you can't fake yourself yeah. because it, we do it. So it's, it's what people say it is. If it's got weird effects, if it's got um, microwave energies, if it's coming up uh, growing differently, like some people take the, cro the crops from inside a crop circle and the crop samples from outside, they grow them, they say they grow at different levels. Anything weird that's connected with crop circles has been done by people. But not because we are putting magic energies into the crop, you know, that, that could be something else. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're the originators of the, the, the okay. flattened crop, right. but that's okay. where it stops. Okay, talking about man-made crop circles, in the height of the crop circle phenomena, mm -hmm. how many teams would you say was there at the biggest point? Um, I think we knew about, was it 19... 19 teams 19 different teams yeah and, making formations yeah and you know sometimes teams would borrow members from one team into another yeah. depending on who was around and you know availability of people yeah. which is a big problem if you know that you've got to be up all night doing a crop circle and then you're going to have to rest the next day so you've got your drive up maybe staying doing the I just had a major balls up with all the cameras and crap <laughs> oh God! So it was on about nineteen type teams. Yeah. So right. the height, which would have been nineteen nineties or two yeah. thousands. Yeah. There's about nineteen teams, um, probably about thirty people, that in the heyday when there was a lot of people down here, and you had some people who were living down here, in the campsite. Some people who were visiting uh, from all different parts of the country, and uh, yeah. 
you know, there were quite a few, quite a few people involved. Yeah. And I think now, now yesterday you mentioned there's probably two teams or two people mm. that are still ready to go. There's two teams effectively uh, because they don't work with each other because I don't think they get on. Um, so you've got about three people. There's two people who were making things last year uh, that I know of, possibly three, but I think just two. Um, certainly there weren't a lot of crop circles. In the in the whole of last year there were something like 20 crop circles. Yeah. And I mean you've had like 120 or more in a year yeah. in some cases. Yeah. But to say they're all man-made, I contacted a friend of mine after last year, I asked you, I asked you what percentage of your crop circles are man-made? 100% you said. Mm -hmm. I phoned a mate of mine and I says to him, hey Les, remember them crop circles in 1992? And he says, yeah. And I says, do you got any information on them? And when he stopped laughing, he <laughs> told me he made all of them. And uh, They were the ones near you though, yes? There was all yeah. the ones in Nottinghamshire, Mansfield, yeah. Mansfield yeah. way. Him and, his, him and his mate made them. Now he couldn't report them because he was the head of a UFO investigation group. Mm. And saying that, he says, my dear, he says there was something weird one night. He says, the first circle we was making, he says, this ball of light appeared. He says, and he says, well, it wasn't a ball, it was more like a plate. It was just a, a thin plate of, he says, and it was like a 50 pence piece shaped type. Don't know how many sides it had got, but he says, it came in from the right, stopped in front of them at about 15 feet away, then it shot off to the left, out of sight, and they carried it in, left them stumped, they didn't know what it was. And about a minute later it came back, stopped in front of them again, as they say, they're still at it, boom, gone. Yeah. Weird. People, You've read some weird stuff. People do see weird things when making crop circles. I've seen a number of things. Um, Sim talking about like UFO type things, uh, balls of light. Mm -hmm. uh, we see these, we got chased out of a field one night when um, I wanted to use a specific field and I had my eyes on it. And when we went there, um, it was like nobody nobody was thinking straight. The group weren't um, weren't on form. Yeah. And and I was saying, come on guys, let's start. And people were like, oh, do you want to start here? Maybe you should start somewhere else. I'm like, it doesn't matter where we start. Just, just, just here's fine, you know, just start. Yeah. And then people were like, oh, well, what, what should I do? What should I do? And I'm like, you know, we've done this so many times. It's just like you take the tape measure and you reel it out. And I'm like, you know, nobody seems to be on form. And I, I'm kind of uh, feeling inside myself like... Uh, I'm not meant to be here. I got this kind of feeling like I'm not meant to be in this field. Yeah. And uh, I thought, oh, I'm going to I'm going to dismiss that. I'm, I'm not interested in that feeling. I'm going to kind of carry on, you know, and uh, just push through it. So I said, come on then. So I was like instructing people now, like you take the tape, go out there, you know, and whatnot. And um, we'd only just started to describe the circle. So literally only a little few footsteps had been done. And suddenly on all well, all corners of the field apart from one, so three corners of a four-cornered field, three l lights appeared, and they were like golden balls, and I would say they're probably about like a basketball or something like that, probably, yeah. at distance, and they just came on, and they were in one position, and because of their brightness, you know, when, you're, when your eyes have adjusted to the dark, any light is very bright, you know, yeah. so these things appeared like they were torches, they were very bright, and um, it stopped us working. I think, you know, a few of us ducked down, which is a technique, you know, you duck down by the crop so that people can't see you, especially if they're shining a torch across. If you've ducked down, they probably wouldn't see you because you'd be below the level of the crop. Yeah. So we ducked down and everyone was kind of like looking at each other, like, you know, what should we do? And, and I think everyone kind of realized that we were probably surrounded and by farmers, that's what it would, would appear to be. You know, it's yeah. like lights have come on, must be farmers, you know. So um, we kind of all at the same time decided to run out of the field. And we used the one part of the field where there wasn't a ball of light because you had three corners were covered. Yeah, go for the exit. Go for the exit point or what seems like the exit. 
you know, and uh, so we, we're running out across the, the crop, just going hell for leather, not using the tram lines to, to walk along, just running across the crop. And we got out of that field pronto pronto, out onto the road. But as we were going, a few of us had, you know, looked back to see what was there. Now, the, it then appeared that these balls of light were moving across into the position where we had been just standing to make the circle. But unlike torches, if it was torches from farmers, you would expect there to be some sort of motion like this as they're walking. So you'd yeah. see the light getting lighter, darker, going up and down. You'd see shine on the crop, you'd see a beam. And there was none of that. It was just that these lights were very carefully moving across into the position where we had been working. So um, we got onto the field and um, I went to get the car, but we left one person behind with our boards <laughs> and we nice. said, right, wait here with the boards, because the one thing you don't want to do is walk up a road carrying equipment under your arm. Yeah. You know, it would be the stupidest thing to do because, you know, you could have a farmer, you could have the police, you just don't want to be seen on a road with that sort of stuff. So anyway, we left him there and he was in a hedge so nobody could see him. And we said, just wait, it'll be fine, you know, we'll only be a few minutes, you know, nobody's going to know where you are. That, that'd be fine. So we walked up over the hill, down the other side, picked up the car, drove up the hill and down the other side. So maybe 10 minutes had gone by now for us to pick up the car. So we were sort of speeding along and I flashed my lights to kind of let the person know that it's us because any car driving down the road would have its lights on permanently. But I just yeah. do the occasional little flash. Yeah. Just that's us. Don't worry, that car is us. So, but before we'd even got to where he should be, he was walking up the middle of the road with the boards under his arm and I and I stopped and I sort of like leaned out I'm like get in get in and he sort of was walking very awkwardly like as if he was stiff and uh, I said what's wrong you know and uh, I said get in get in you know before anybody sees us and uh, he, he got into the car and I and he said oh just get me out of here get me out of here and I said well, what what is it and he said um Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't stay there. There was screaming sounds, like banshees, like like women screaming or wailing. Oh, wow. And I'm like, really? And he said, Yeah, yeah. And I, 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 I just wanted to go. And I, I said, Yeah, but you know, you could walk up the road, but, but you've taken the boards with you. He said, Yeah, I took them because I, in case I needed to hit somebody with them, you know. And I'm like, oh. you know, but what, what, what were you thinking? Like, you know, walking up the middle of the road. What if the police had caught caught you? What if it was a police car and they picked you up? And he said, to be honest, he said, if it was the police, I would have gladly gone with them. Wow. That's scary. how scared he was. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So that was a one time we saw balls of light. There's been other occasions where we've seen little red, little red orbs in the distance. And um, there have been flashes of light that a lot of people have seen this, including some scientists um, who we've told this story to. One chap. He was into astronomy and he says, I've never heard of what you're talking about. I've never heard of it. Because we said that the whole light would just flash like a flash gun had gone off. Yeah. But it would be everywhere, but it wouldn't be bright. It would be like a dim flash and it would just be doop, like that. And it would just flash everywhere and people would see it all around them. And we'd get that happen a lot when we were making circles. So I told him about this and he was like very dismissive. And I said, well, look, come out, watch us make a circle. You know, you never know. Yeah. And we took him out. He watched us making a circle and I said, did you see the flash? He said, yeah. And I said, that's one of them. And then there were more and more and more. And he said, I have no idea what this is. I've been an astronomer for years. I've never seen this before. Wow. So, you know. Nice one. Yeah. You've also seen dark figures yes. that are not part of the crew. Yeah. The, the men in black or the black shaped figures, you know, that, that we, we've seen have been... Uh, you, when you when it's night time and your eyes have adjusted to the dark, you can see where your friends are. You can see a figure, but you can't make out who it is. Yeah. You can't see the face, so you can see a black shape. So quite often, I would say like you know John or something like that, and I would walk up to them and it would be somebody else, and they go, oh no, John's over there, and I go, oh, all oh, right, okay. So you have to, you yeah. know, you're in the wrong place with the wrong person. So that would happen, and then there have been times when. I, I had somebody standing next to me and I, I said, um, I said, well, who's that over there? Like that, right? And, and then I said, well, come on, let's go and have a look. So I've walked over to the person and that is the person who I thought it was. And I look back and that person who's standing next to me is not there anymore. He's gone. He's no gone. way to be seen. No. 
No. Wow. And there, there's even a, a chap um, took a photograph, a series of photographs, and he says, so it's his testimony, that um, when he took the photos, the black figures were not present in the shots he was taking because he was taking photos of a crop circle in the daytime. Yeah. And the figures that appeared on the photos when he had them developed, if you look at the clothing of people, they, they're wearing dark clothing in bits. So if you look at like their trousers, it's black. And if you look at that level of black, the figures that are standing there just as silhouettes. You know, there's no face, no, it's just complete black. That black is much blacker than the black that's seen taken off people's clothing and other yeah. things seen in the scene. It's almost like as if light had been subtracted, almost. Right. So it was like zero light. It wasn't like 50% light was black and 100% light would be white. You know, but 50% would be your trousers. Yeah. It was like zero. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and th this was negative film. So, you know, he'd taken photos during the day and it would be very hard to insert a doctored photo into a negative strip because you see the sequence of photos taken. Yeah. So, Tell us about, um, you've had um, measurements, as in scientific measurements, meter readings mm -hmm. of, of what, electromagnetic in the fields being clear mm -hmm. and then a crop circle being made and you go back into that and Yes. Go on that one. Yeah, there, there was um, an opportunity that we had because somebody asked us, and it's not something we do very often, they asked us to do a design and they would pay for the field and it was for the digital, broad, digital broadcasting company, DAB. Mm. So in the UK we've got digital radios, DAB, it has a logo and it's an ellipse. And it almost, instead of like an ampersand, you know, the at sign in yeah. an email, it was an R with a squirrel around it, so it was an mean. R, but then it was stretched to become like an oval, and that was the DAB logo. So the, the, the chap who was the chairman of the company, he had heard about us circle makers, and he said, um, well, I've got a bit of land, would you do one on my land? And I said, yeah, sure, okay. But because it was paid for and above board, it gave me a great opportunity to ask various researchers and people who were interested in the field, yeah. would they like to come and attend and watch? So there was um, a guy called Ron Russell, who was with the C-SETI group, it's Dr. Stephen Greer and, and them, he was connected with them. Uh, there was Dr. Simeon Hine, um, he's done research on crop circles for many years and uh, you know, he's published many books on the subject and mm -hmm. things. Um, and also there was uh, Linda Moulton Howe was there. And, uh, the idea was just watch us doing it. If you want to do any experiments, do any experiments you want. So, turned up at the field, met the people, said, would you like to do a baseline of the field? And they said yes. So they went and tested around with equipment to test for magnetics, electromagnetic static, yeah. things like that. And they said the field is kind of, as they would expect, is kind of flat. Yeah. You know? And um, <clears throat> then we made this circle, broad daylight. Um, it, I was showing that the, the design and how we, we work from the design is to do with measurements. So I was trying to say, look, you know, you can do this at night because as you can see, it's all measurements we're doing here. So you don't have to see, you don't have to guess, like left a bit, left a bit, right a bit, right a bit. You never, that's not part of making crop circles. It's measurements. It's yeah. all about measurements. Yeah. If you were to do it with dead reckoning, you'd, you'd mess it up. But anyway, so I think we kind of made the point that we can work from a design and we can put it into the field. Um, and then at the end of it, uh, we said, would they like to, to like test it and see if there's any effects they can pick up? And uh, apparently they told me that they had the highest readings on their equipment that they'd had from any crop circle they'd ever visited, wow. which was interesting. And I thought, well, that's, that's going to be nice then. At least now somebody has been out with us, watched us making a circle and has experienced something that goes towards this there is something in these man-made circles energetically that can be measured. So, they, uh, I, I thought, well, that would, that would be good news. Yeah. Now, that was reported as exactly that by Ron Russell and Simeon Hein. Unfortunately, let's just say another researcher who was there um, decided that they wouldn't report on what had taken place. They said, um, when they went, they went on their radio show back in the States, they said, uh, we saw some guys trying to make a crop circle and it wasn't very good and I think they work for the CIA. Really? Yeah. 
So there was no mention made of the fact that there was a large electromagnetic effect which was demonstrated yeah. in a man-made circle. Wow. So that might have been that, an attempt by that particular re researcher to suppress yeah. the, the truth because I mean I, I haven't got weird magnetic boots on <laughs> and, I, and, and I've not got a little backpack that's like generating strange yeah. signals. You also, so, <laughs> you also, you also yeah. say you get influenced by a higher force. Yeah. Now, one night, you always plan this stuff ahead. Sort of, sometimes one the day night, before. But one, yes. night, one night, you yeah. says, I've got to go and do a crop circle. And you was on your own. And you went out there and you did a simple crop circle. I did. Something strange happened that night. Mm hmm And? Well, I... I got the urge, sitting in my house without a team, it was quite late at night, I got the urge that I really need to go, go out and make a crop circle. So um, going by these gut instincts, like I said earlier on, there was a time where I thought we shouldn't be in that field, that uh, it didn't feel right, but I went against that instinct. Well, there have been a lot of times when those instincts have kind of drawn me to do certain things to do with this subject. So. This was one of these nights where I got this like real urge that I really needed to make a crop circle. And I thought, well, logically, this is stupid. I don't have a team. Why don't I just wait at night, you know, another night and get a team together? And I haven't got a design. And, and then it's like, no, you've got to do it. You've got to do this. And I'm like, OK. I thought, well, all right, then I'm in the mood. Let's see what I could do. I could maybe use a tripod and I can weight it down. So I took a backpack with me to weight the tripod down. And I'll take my tape and I'll attach it to the tripod. So that's like a person then holding the tape. Yeah. And it'll have to be a smaller circle because if I pull the tape out too much, it's going to pull the pull the, the tripod yeah. over. You know. So um, I went to a location that I just felt would probably be a good place. You know, um, hadn't planned it very well, but just went there and um, walked into the field. And as I was walking in, I could hear a guitar. And singing, and I was like, "Ooh, that right." Acoustic okay. guitar sounded like an acoustic guitar, and people singing and things going on of that nature, and voices chatting as well. And I thought, "Oh, there's people nearby." Now that doesn't mean I can't make the crop circle. It just means you've got to be careful and quiet, and you don't make banging sounds, and you don't speak because yeah. the sound of crunching crop is quite hard to hear uh, because it sounds like wind from a distance. So you okay. hear like you hear sort of. Shh, but from a distance that kind of blends out but a voice will travel a mile you know you'll hear a voice yeah. and you'll hear whistling and things like that it'll, it'll definitely give away your presence but I was confident I could do this close to these people they wouldn't know I was there so I made the circle and I thought okay right I'll come out of the field now I've finished um, could still hear people talking and various things going on and I'm like okay right finish go home and in the morning, I like listened to the information coming out about what people had said about crop circles, new crop circles. And they said, oh, there's one up at um, Avebury, appeared last night. And it was really interesting because a group up there were meditating and this crop circle appeared right next to them. So I said, well, who is the group then? And I found out who the group was and I actually knew some of them. So I uh, contacted them without saying that I'd made the circle initially. And I said, well, so, so what's this about you having a crop circle appear near you then? And um, Diane Krishna was the, uh, the lady I was speaking to. Yeah. And she said, um, yeah, it was so weird because we were there meditating and we had a design in mind and we were meditating on this design. And then it appeared like, you know, 200 feet away from us. I'm like, okay, so um, you were just meditating. And she was like, yeah. And I said, so was anybody playing guitars and laughing and talking? And she said, no. I said, did you hear anybody playing a guitar or laughing or talking or anything like that? She says, no, no, it was completely silent. We were all just meditating. Wow. And I thought then, and, 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 at, and at that point I said, well, look, I'm going to level with you. I made that circle. And the reason I made it that shape is because it's the easiest shape to make with one measurement that I can do with just one person because I can scribe that using the tripod as the other person. It's the easiest, simplest shape of all to do. Yeah. Um, but that was exactly the shape that they were asking for. It was a six-fold petal, which is part of the 
um, oh, it's a, the, the flower of life, I think it's called, right. where you take these six-fold petals and you multiply them on top of each other to get this really complicated pattern, which is known as the flower of life. And they just asked for, for the one flower of life. Right. And I, I you know, got the urge to go out there and do it. It's not the only time that's happened because we got an urge to go and do one um, between my house in Bishop's Cannings and Avebury, halfway between the two on, on the side of the road. I did it and um, I found out then that a Japanese researcher um, had been meditating, asking for, a, for a, that design and we'd gone and done it fairly close to where they wanted it to appear yeah. and we, we put it down there. Now I told him this and he said, oh well that, that's really interesting but I mean I don't know if I believe that you can really do these complicated designs. So I said, well alright then, I said you give me a design and we'll go out and do it in real conditions. Now we didn't pay the farmer by the way but um, <laughs> uh, so it was a bit of a naughty one, you know, we, we were doing it you know, the, the way I know best, which yeah. is just go out and do it. Yeah. Um, so he, uh, he gave us the design and it was actually the, the like a flower out on the outside and uh, a shape on the inside. And that was his family crest, Jap oh, right. Japanese family crest. So uh, we did this all night long and there was a slight mistake was made when we were doing it in the measurements. So the petal sizes were going to be slightly different. Right. And um, he got very upset over this in the middle of the night because to him, this was a mistake on something that meant his family's honor, you know, <laughs> and, and sort of, you know, it meant a lot. And yeah. then he wondered whether or not, because there had been a mistake, it meant that his family were not blessed or were not kind yeah. of in favor yeah. and that, you know, it might be a bad sign for the future. You know, it could be something that, you know, and I, and I said to him, I said, look, we always make mistakes when we're making crop circles, right? I mean, our mistakes, nobody else notices. And if we make a really bad mistake, we just alter it and change it and adapt it. And nobody ever knows. And in fact, people will sometimes say, wow, that, that little extra arm that popped out of the circle is, <laughs> is the amazing bit. You yeah. know, but that was a mistake. And then we've woven it into something that looks like it was meant to be there in the first place. I said, so what you always have to remember with crop circles is that you try your best to get what you want, yeah. but if it doesn't work well, you clean it up so that nobody will know that it wasn't exactly how you originally said. And if you look at that in terms of life, I said to him, I said, um, everything in life is change. So if your uh, family crest is immutable and can never be changed and can never grow, then yeah. maybe you know you have to learn that as you grow and your family grows, maybe the crest will change as well. Yeah. And he said, "Oh my God, I, I'm, I, I see the, I can see it now." <laughs> it's like, Sorry. and I'm like, you know, so that's that's how we got not around that situation, but but you know, certainly helped yeah. to kind of. You yeah. know, smooth it over. I'm not sure on which one the next one was. Mm. It might have been one with the uh, the uh, guitars and the singing, but weren't you shrouded by a fog bank? Right. It. What we weren't shrouded by a fog bank, but people that were looking in saw a fog bank, but we didn't see it. So this is this is a kind of a where where your gut feeling comes in again because uh, we went to a field. We had it planned to do it in this field. It was a great field. And so we got there and just as we get into the edge of the field, we can hear voices. And then we work out that at the high end of the field, right at the top, there were a group of people. And we, we were listening to them and we could see they were playing with some device. And, and I said, well, are they, are they crop watchers? I mean, you know, we're gonna, we can't do it here because they're gonna see us, surely, you know. So I think I walked up the tram line and just went through an evening and that and they were there with a telescope so they were sky watching they weren't looking for crop circles so I so I sort of then I walked around the edge of the field and came back around I said oh it's okay they're, they're sky watchers so they're yeah. probably not watching the field for crop makers so you know I said but it, to be honest though I, we can see them and they're higher and they can definitely see where we'd be making a circle it doesn't really seem like the <laughs> like we're going to really be able to do this yeah and he said no no it would be a bit silly wouldn't it and i said yeah and i said but funny i just get the funniest feeling like 
we should do this. We should actually go and try this. Yeah. And he said, yeah, i got a fe- feeling like that as well. Like, it's we not should. just you then, other people get the same feelings yeah. of go for yeah. it. Yeah, like go for it, go for it, do it, you know. And, I, and I'm like, I said, but this goes against all my logical brain that says, yeah. you know, I don't want to get caught in the middle <laughs> of making a crop circle. Especially a gang of little bit of watching. Yeah, there's people absolutely can see us, we can see them. And, uh, you know, it seems silly to think like this, but, but yeah, I kind of feel like that we should do it, you know. So we went ahead and did it. So we went ahead and did it. It was quite an elaborate design. It was quite um, uh, an inspired design because we adapted and changed it on the go and added little things to it, you know, there and then. Yeah. So it wasn't as we had it on the paper originally. It, it, it was more elaborate than, you know, than that because we, we felt we were on a like a little buzz with this one, you know, kind of like doing it right. and, you know, and getting away with it as well, you know. So, um in the morning, we left the field and um, we uh, tried to find out who these people were. We, we asked around and people said, oh yeah, there was some astronomers. They, they said that um, the astronomers reported all night long there was a fog bank over the field just covering the area where, you, where the circle was and in the morning, just as the daylight was breaking, the fog broke up and there was a circle there. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. okay. So they couldn't see us and they couldn't hear us and we managed to do the circle really close to where they were. Cloak of protection. And it was like we were being protected that night from being seen. Wow. Or something. Yeah. So that's, that stopped by the way. That stopped about twenty yeah. minutes ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um before we finish, um there was a picture that you spotted when we first came in. Mm. Oh I can't tell I can't I can't tell you the thing I told you about that one. You can you can keep the uh, you can keep the fact that I'm saying I, no. Let's not talk about that one because I'm, I'll be pissing people off otherwise. That's still recording. That's still recording. Right, we'll finish. We'll finish while that's buzzing. What, we'll, we've got to finish because it's flashing. What I will say though is what we what we were going to show then, but I said don't say that bit. Is there's a crop circle in this room, a design. And I said to Tony that if you know how to spot the, the signs that their man made, they're very easy to spot, yeah. you know. And in, in fact, one of these designs, which Tony saw, actually was signed by the artist. In and the crop. And that signature appears on a lot, not all, but on a lot of what this person did out there. Yeah. Now, once you know it, you can't unknow it. And once you've seen it, you can't <laughs> unsee it. I got you. And now yeah. he's going to go and have a look at all pictures of crop circles over the years. Looking and he's going to see, signatures. he's going to look for this signature and he's yeah. going to see it. Yeah. And, and I told him who it, well, who it might Matt, be as we're well. We're going to have to cut it there because <laughs> the camera's about to die. So, yeah, thank you very much. We can continue it again if you want. Yeah. Got more it. stories. Like the one mile wide UFO I saw over Pusey, little ball of light went up into it, whoosh, into the sky. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. As it's like, I can, I can talk for hours on stories of this stuff, but yeah. Oh, really? We'll keep it for another time. Yeah. Yeah. That was brilliant. Nice one. Thank you very much, Matt. No problem. Cheers. What? I want to see that signature now. Yeah. My mind drink down.